There was some big news that broke a, a few nights ago, the Comey memo that could sink the Trump administration. So this is from ABC News. Recently fired FBI Director James Comey was asked by President Trump to drop the Bureau's investigation into former National Security Advisor Michael Flynn, according to a memo Comey wrote of his meeting with the president. Details of the memo, first reported by the New York Times on Tuesday, were later confirmed to ABC by sources close to Comey. In the memo, which Comey shared with top FBI associates, he wrote that Trump said the following, I hope you can let this go, referring to the inquiry into Flynn's actions. I hope you can see your way clear to letting this go, to letting Flynn go, said Trump, according to a source who read the memo. He is a good guy. I hope you can let this go. Multiple sources who worked closely with Comey, including at the Justice uh, Department, say he is known for his contemporaneous and thorough note-taking. He documents everything, one source said. So, why is this important? Well, uh, first of all, it's a fact that Michael Flynn in indeed did have uh, connections to Russia, business connections to Russia, uh, was using back channels to Russia. Uh, the reason I say it's a fact is because he was fired over it, and it's been proven. Uh, now, at the same time, you also have Paul Manafort. He was another Trump campaign official who was let go because of uh, proven connections to Russia. And Trump realized, hey, wait a second, this, this is not good optics. This makes me look bad, so I'm going to go ahead and throw Manafort under a bus because Manafort was doing business with pro-Russian elements in Ukraine. Um, and again, Flynn, similar thing. Uh, it's, it's on, it's a matter of record that he was paid by the Russian government for a variety of things. Um, so Trump eventually let him go as a result of that. And as a result of the pressure from the media that was, uh, brought on him because of that. Um, so now when Trump says to Comey, Hey man, you know, let this go. Uh, Flynn's a good guy. That is the textbook definition of obstruction of justice. If the FBI and the FBI director are looking into, uh, you know, a potential case against a former campaign official, the idea that the president could interfere in that and could just openly say, you know, stop doing that, well, if that's not obstruction of justice, I don't know what is obstruction of justice. And my guess is that since Trump fired Comey, you have loyalists within the FBI who are pissed about that. And so now, you know, you're going to get more leaks and more uh, secrets about how Trump was acting behind the scenes released. And of course, Trump doesn't know what he's doing. Uh, he's not that bright. He doesn't understand the rules and the laws that he has to abide by. And he doesn't understand checks and balances. So for him, this was probably just an offhand comment. Like, yeah, no, I don't, I like Flynn. Flynn is my boy. Uh, even though I let him go, I, I still like the guy. So please, I hope you can find it within you to not, to not go after him. And Comey, for all of his flaws, the case has been made that he's kind of a by-the-book guy, a rigidly by-the-book guy. And to him, this is like, ooh, what? Did you really just... And of course, to Comey's loyalists within the FBI, they say the same thing. So putting the the substance of whether or not you think the Russia connections are a big deal or not, putting that aside. So whether or not you agree you're a full Olbermann or full Maddow on the, oh my God, this is treason, you know, this guy's a Russian puppet, yada, yada. Whether or not you're on that side of the issue or you're on the side of the issue, uh, the let's call it the Michael Tracy... Jordan Charrod and Jimmy Dore, me side of the issue of, I think this is being blown out of proportion and I don't even know what the potential deal is he could have made with Russia. Like, what is Russia getting in return? He's done nothing policy-wise that benefits them. But regardless where you fall on that issue, this is obstruction of justice. <laughs> like, there's no... To me, it doesn't, that doesn't appear to be up in the air. You can't just be, oh, yeah, don't do that thing that you're doing in what's supposed to be a system where we have co-equal branches that have checks and balances. So this is why this is such a big story. And this is why, you know, people are going, whoa, 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 maybe it's time to do impeachment now because, 
I mean, what uh, what else is there? What are we going to do? What, are we just going to let this guy go out there and violate every rule or law under the sun, and then we just we walk away like it's all good? Now, look, I've laid out in detail multiple times why if you do impeachment, I think you're risking political capital on that, and you're not going to spend it on policy things and things that could actually make a, a, a difference. And you impeach Trump and you get Pence. Pence is uh, just as bad as Trump, if not worse. Now, I get it. Trump's a loose cannon and he's a man-child. Uh, but with Pence, he's for all the uh, draconian policies that, that Trump is for, plus TPP, which is worse, and plus actually believing Christian fundamentalism and wanting to do regressive policies for the LGBTQ community. So I don't think it would be necessarily better. And at least with Trump, he wears his crazy on his sleeve. Pence can put on the smile and be polite and be charming, but have the most odious beliefs and push the worst policies imaginable and be the ultimate establishment Republican. So, you know, you can make a case just for practical reasons. You don't want to spend the political capital and you don't want to get somebody who's equally bad or, or uh, if not worse. But yeah, there's also a principled argument to say, I don't give a shit. The guy you know, did something that's worthy of impeachment, so damn the consequences, we should do impeachment either way. That's not a, a crazy uh, position to take. So, this is real. Like, the whole obstruction of justice thing and the, hey, impeachment thing, it's real. And the most interesting part is you have a lot of Republicans who are saying, hmm, hmm, kind of. I mean, what do you want me to say? Uh, the guy, if he did it, he did it. And here's one thing I know for sure. There are a lot of Republicans, elected Republicans, who don't like Trump. But there are no elected Republicans who don't like Pence. So they might be ready to just stab him a couple times in the side and, and dump his body on the road. Because they'd love to have a president, Mike Pence. I can guarantee you that. And it appears like everything is kind of lining up for uh, Trump to maybe be taken down. Now, again... From the Democrats' perspective, if I'm the Democrats, I'm still hammering away on policy. You know, I, if I was leading the Democrats, that'd be the day. Uh, but I'd be pushing for single-payer Medicare for all on a daily basis, pushing for free college, make the minimum wage a living wage tied to inflation and the wars. Uh, I'd be pointing out the fact that Trump just signed a bill that had like a 6 or 7% approval rating, the bill that... Uh, 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 takes away your internet privacy rights and lets companies sell your information to third parties. That's where my energy would be. But I think the Democrats are going to spend it more in, in this way, talking about impeachment and talking about Russia, Russia, Russia. And I'm not sure that's good politics, but in terms of the substance of whether or not there's a case for impeachment there now, the answer is unquestionably yes.